You know, I, I had you, I'm sorry to interrupt you there, yeah. but that's where I have to come in. When we think of the facts that this government understood or would have, you know, seen the level that things were, you know, going to get to, we already saw the indices coming. I think uh, even at the Nigerian Economic Summit Group, there was a warning that, you know, we were heading towards a recession if things were not done on time. This government had lofty promises so they were at some point i think we even heard that they were going to stabilize the naira uh, maybe it was also interpreted to mean that the no, naira would be equal no, to the no, dollar of course, of course that go, go ahead but of course, you know, that is not those were the kinds of things that we heard those are the kind of promises that nigerians were were looking forward to but if we look at where this government has taken over power and where we are right now if we even look at the figures that the Nigerian Bureau of Statistics is still quoting, it's still five years of negative growth, uh, beg your pardon, five, five quarters. consecutive yeah. quarters yeah. of negative growth. Yeah. We haven't seen much in that area. Unemployment is still on the high. Two years of inflation, we're talking about 35%, is the highest that we've seen so far yeah. in any administration. 17%, 17 percent, not that 5% inflation. If we look at the combination right. of, no, it, no, no, of no. it, and 17 no. percent is still very high right yes well, especially when we're coming from yeah. single digit inflation right so for the ordinary man out there i mean this is also the time when we have also seen people have not been paid salaries pension uh pensioners have been owed in yeah. in many states the vice president the acting president acknowledges as much right so in, for a lot of people they're yet to feel these things that government is talking about but you see number one where are we coming from you're coming from a situation where you are earning $100 a barrel for crude to a situation where we are earning $30 a barrel per crude. It takes acute discipline, management of resources to even be where we are today. And that the truth must be told. When we came in in, 20, in, 20, in 2015, the president had to issue a directive that all government revenues be put in the Treasury single account. Before then, we have over 22,000 various accounts with deposit money banks. And we are paying almost 4.7 billion naira every month in, 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 in charges because people were borrowing you know, from those banks. Now, before we came in, the integrated personal payroll information system was so compromised that within a period of less than two years, we were able to detect over 50,000 arenas, arenas you know, entries. And we've been saving almost one, we've saved over 180 billion naira, you know, over that period of time. Now, if, you are, if, you, if your resources, you know, goes down from 100,000 so from $100 a barrel to $30 a barrel, you would definitely have recession. There's no question about it. But the good news is that even despite all that, what have we achieved? Between October and today, we've been able to add an additional $7 billion to our foreign reserve. Be able to add an additional $87 million to the excess, uh, excess crude account. Be able to attract $500 million into the sovereign wealth fund. Now, just, just one. You see, people come and say, oh, they have not been able to pay salaries in states. You know, in, 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 in states. And, I say, my, my, and my, our position is this. We're running a federation where the states and federal governments have their responsibilities. Four times this government has intervened to help states. When we came in in 2015, about 24, about 24 to 26 states could not pay their salaries. Now, so, Please set aside what the federal government needs to do, which we have done, and what, what we need to do. 